bit of an experimental VPUB this evening. I've been doing the channel now for three years and it feels like three months. And I would like to celebrate that. I would like to celebrate this. Hello, whiskey folk. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another VPUB, another Thursday evening. Fantastic to see you all here tonight. Uh, let's see. I'm trying something new tonight. I'm also uh, putting this out on Facebook as well. Hopefully, it doesn't take any effort from me. Hopefully, the software's doing it. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the comments and things are managed. Um, but welcome, everybody. Slightly different tonight. Uh, there's been lots of really cool, crunchy themes on the VPubs in recent weeks, all through December, the last couple in January, were fairly strong subjects, I felt as well. But tonight, um, I was trying to come up with something to kind of just make note of the fact that it was three years that the channel's been going. And, um, you know, not being one to celebrate kind of subscriber milestones or anniversaries or anything normally, I felt like, it should at least be celebrated to, to say thanks, at least. And I think the biggest thing I want to celebrate, probably the thing that I've committed to and stuck to more than anything, um, has been these VPubs. Um, they've been very, very regular. I've missed very few. I, only, I think I've only missed maybe one or two slots in the entire time that they've been running. Um, and I kind of wanted to celebrate uh, the culture and the community and you guys, everything that's built up around it, everything that makes me so excited to get in this wee seat and sit in front of you every two weeks and talk about whiskey and how much fun whiskey can be and how fantastic it is at bringing us all together. I am not used to doing VPubs without a fallback theme. So, so let's see how it goes tonight. Uh, right at the top of the stream, I've had a, a dram bought to me by Mark Goins as well. You star, Mark. Thanks so much. He's saying, congrats on three years. So glad to be a part of the community. Mark, I got to meet you, of course, last year. Um, I'm very glad that you're part of this community as well, and it's good to call you a friend. Going to raise a wee dram and say, slant you, Mark. Thank you so much. I've got a confession to make. I uh, broke my no-buy January. I promised to myself twice this month, and it was for two bottles that I'm worried that are going to disappear quite soon. I'm going to share them with you. Um, I need to write down what the other one is, actually. Um, I don't actually think I have it here. Um, I have it next door. But this one I bought literally in the minutes before this stream went live. This is a sample. I'm drinking samples from the community tonight. Um, everything I'm going to share with you is things that people have given me. And this is a sample from Spiritworks Tom, who I think is going to be in a bit later. He's out uh, dramming with some friends with Ard Baggy and a couple of other guys tonight, um, as I understand. But he sent me this Adel Ewan, a 15-year-old from that boutique whiskey company. This is a 47.5% batch number two, quite a distinctive label on it. I've tried it a couple of times. I tried it at the festival last year. The Whiskey Rev bought a bottle of it. A few other guys did as well. I didn't buy a bottle of it. But my goodness, <laughs> I love Adel Ewan anyway. And all the things that I like about Del Yun is intact in this dram. It's very, very pale. It's light, but it's heavy and creamy and wonderful. I had a couple of drams in as well from Greg Lewis. You star, Greg. Thank you so much. Wonderful. To, no comment, but just a, a dram from you. Thank you so much, Greg. And uh, Matthias, uh, that's Matt over in, the, in Denmark. Ear Whiskey said, thank you for continuing to inspire. Thank you very much, Matt. I'll raise a glass to Greg. Um, was, it, was it Greg? Tell me it was Greg, Greg Lewis, and uh, Matt over in Denmark. Slancher boys, thank you both so much. Mm -mm. Before I start havering, before I start going on about um, uh, buying whiskies instead of uh, being resolute and sticking to my promise to myself, let's jump in and welcome some of you fantastic barflies. I missed a lot of orange at the start when I was talking, didn't I? 
Marcus Crichton is a new star. He's saying, hi there, Roy. Congrats to three years. Thank you so much, Marcus. Is Christina with you tonight? I hope she is. The Whiskey Influencer is in. Is saying, hello, Roy. Zach Andrews is saying, happy three years. Menno's Multi-Mission is in. Menno, that was a fantastic comment uh, that you put in Patreon earlier. I've got it here in front of me. And a bit later on, um, I might need to uh, fill some air with uh, reading out a fantastic comment and contribution contribution from you, which summed up exactly how I feel about these VPUBs, actually. Um, Zach Andrews is saying, uh, happy three years. Uh, um, thank you so much, Zach. Did I catch that one already? Uh, the mouse needs to behave itself a little bit. John Paul Vanderhoven is saying, hi, barflies. Hi to you, John Paul. David Evans is here as well. Gixer Skipper is in. Uh, Orange Wool, you star, good to see you in, my friend. Good to see you back again. Whiskey Whistle, Mark is in from Canada. So good to see you in, Mark. Don't know what time it is over where you are. I hope you can stay a while, my friend. Uh, Arnie Tiger is here is saying, hello, Roy. Good evening. Good to see you, Arnie, as well. Always fantastic to have your support, my friend. Whiskey Novice, Jim Ingram is in. Jim, I've made a wee note down here. I would like to mention you a wee bit later in the stream. Hope I don't cause you any blushes, uh, but I would like to uh, mention uh, Jim a wee bit later. Simon Ray is here saying happy third. Thank you so much, Simon. Lee J. Brown is in. Uh, Andrew Butler is here. Not sure if the Royal Highland Hotel's Wi-Fi will cope with this. Ah, you're travelling, Andrew. Well, let's see how you got on. And I uh, hope you're having a nice time in the Royal Highland Hotel. Uh, Stude Whiskey is here. Good to see you, my friend. Saying happy third birthday. Well done. It's officially tomorrow is... A, uh, I need to probably talk about why the channel actually exists. It might be fun for the folk that haven't heard it. Um, but it was tomorrow, uh, 31st of January 2017. Uh, but this is just the nearest VPUB to that date. The first video didn't go out till mid-February. Um, uh, I was kind of making the video and working up to uh, getting over the... Um, I don't know, the imposter syndrome, the fear, the self, uh, lack of self-belief and things to make the first video, and it didn't go out until middle of February, but the channel uh, was created on the 31st of January, and I'll tell you why it came about, because um, it, uh, it might not be what you imagine. Um, Skogsmard is here, Mikey, hey, you star, Mikey, good to see you in, good to see you, Skogsmard. Thomas McCrory up there, just up the road from me as well. Uh, thanks for the coherent sample, Thomas. You're very, very welcome, and uh, you deserve it, my friend. Thanks for all your support over the years. Um, no answers. Whiskey saying that was a, a, a silly rule. Um, what was that rule? What was the rule? Have I just said the rule? And uh, oh, no, by January. Yes, it was a bit of a. It was naive, but I managed to get quite a long way through the month. I mean, we're almost at the end of the month now, right? And uh, yes, uh, I bought two bottles because I was worried that it might be um, something that uh, would disappear soon. Tom Good is here. Good to see you, uh, Tommy St. Scotch on the bio. You finally caught your cameo on Roy's channel. Fun stuff. That's right, Leanne joined me here, Tom, um, up in the, when I was upstairs still, when we were in the tiny little layer. It's still a small layer, but it's got a wee bit more room. And I hope the next time Leanne comes along, she's got a bit more leg space. Bogdan is saying, hello, Roy. I can hardly wait to get my first Aquavite coin. Bogdan, my friend, it's already winging its way across to you. I'm caught up. In fact, no, I've got one package, uh, two packages down here next to me, uh, ready to go out tomorrow. Um, but I am up to date with all my packages. If anybody's waiting on anything for me, samples, merch, T-shirts, glassware, coins, whatever it may be, drop me an email and I'll let you know exactly where it is. Um, but you can be confident that if you don't have it, it's on its way. It's a good feeling to be caught up again. Uh, Whiskey Whistle saying, nice to join you for a milestone like a three-year channel anniversary. I like that channel anniversary, Mark. Can can you believe, Mark? It's three years. Um, it's crazy to me. I just can't. I can't. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes it feels like I've been doing it for a long time, and other times I kind of go back and think about the first few videos and the first couple of VPUBs and things, and it doesn't seem like 2017. It's 2017. It seems really like it was just last year. Nigel Slynn is here saying, I didn't realise Aquavita was three already. Many happy returns, Roy. Thank you so much, Nigel. Uh, Whiskey Straight uh, AI, I think that's AI or maybe Al. Always make a mistake there. Um, uh, Aquavita asks, Whiskey lovers can always justify breaking our rules. Sometimes whiskey demands it. Karina One is saying, greetings, Roy. I can't keep from scooping out that Dell bag to see when and if it's been opened. 
Well, here's something for you, Carino, and everybody that's in the bar flies. Try and bully me into opening something that's behind me. Something, I mean, all of these on this shelf here are gifts from the community. Um, there are various gifts lying around me. There are other things that I've bought myself that I'm keeping for a nice moment. And sometimes those nice moments are just, you know, an average Tuesday night. Sometimes it's an anniversary. So if there's something here that you would like me to uncork, um, share my initial thoughts from an neck pour with you, pour a couple of samples and share it with you guys, um, bully me into opening something and I'll just try and catch comments as they come up and see where that takes us. Alistair Gray, you star has bought me a dram and said, happy third Aquavite birthday, Roy Slancha. Slancha, uh, Alistair, I'm getting through this dram remarkably quick. It's always a shame with uh, that boutique whiskey company bottles that they're only 50 CL. But sometimes they come out with a peach. And this is a peach. This is a fantastic example of Dalyuan. It's got light fruit. This guy's heavy. It's creamy. It sits on your palate really, really, really well. There's light spice, white pepper. There's the spice is like... Light spices, baked spices, baked goods. It's a little bit nutty, ever so slightly like a, like a ever so slightly roasted almond type pastry note going on. The Yuna is a fantastic distillery to explore generally. Lots of it's available from independent bottlers. Um, when you get a good one, it sits on the palate really, really well. It's lovely and creamy and viscous. Um, sometimes you get a bottling that, that really shows off its waxy uh, element as well, which is uh, kind of by design by Diageo, um, but if you get your, I mean this one's a cracker, it's £55, not too expensive honestly, it's a 15 years old, 47.5%, 50cl bottle, it's a small bottle, but I have to say, as I've already admitted, I've just been on Master Malt and I bought one of these before I went live tonight, simply on the reminder from Tom's sample here. It's very good. Pierre is saying, I've tried to do a no by January, but the Coquera 8-year-old <laughs> was too strong. Let's say 57.1% ABV. I know what you're talking about with Coquera 8-year-old. And if it's one of those kind of hero whiskies that if you just, if you had the moment, uh, if you happened across it, you had to just pick it up because it's uh, not lasted. As soon as, it kind of, it was a slow burner at the start. People um, that tried it were enjoying it and buying it up and things. But as soon as word got out there, everybody went nuts. And what is crazy about that is that is it much better than the Springbank 12-year-old cast strength? Honestly, no. Let's keep things in perspective. But the Springbank 12-year-old cast strength versus standard Springbank, while it's a contrast, it's not nearly as marked a contrast as the newest 2019 8-year-old Kilkerran cast strength is from an Oloroso cask. It is such a marked contrast from the way we're used to enjoying Kilkerran that you could argue a little bit that it's not typical Kilkerran, and that's probably true. But nevertheless, it's a fantastic, compelling dram. Really interesting, full of character, very bold, full of flavour, and around about 50 to 60 pounds. Incredible value, nothing to talk about. That's why it's disappeared so quickly. Thomas Elmer is here saying, well, I'm not bullying you, but if you don't crack into that Elmer tea lee and share it before next bastard's ball, I won't have any reason to bring something else. Well... Could it be that what we burst open tonight is Thomas Elmer's Elmer T. Lee? Is it here, Thomas? Yes, it is. Leaves a big gap on the shelf there. Thomas handed this to me in Texas, and I knew, I don't know much about this, um, but I knew its reputation, and I knew how good it was uh, reputed to be, and I knew how difficult it was to get a hold of it. I knew that he'd handed me something special, but I didn't immediately... Um, realized that obviously it was from Thomas Elmer and it's Elmer T. Lee. So I didn't make that connection straight away, but I'm very grateful to have it. Could this be the bottle to get cracked and shared this evening? Who's in a, who's in a Kentucky? Uh, it's Kentucky straight bourbon, isn't it? Yes. Who's in a Kentucky bourbon mood this evening? There we go. Nice one, Thomas. I'm glad I caught that comment. Kilted Moose is saying, I had that till you and it didn't last long and thoroughly enjoyed it. Scott, you and I have very similar tastes. The ones that stick out for us, the favourite ones, so let's say the non-peated favourite ones, we tend to find 
uh, that we enjoy the similar things, and I agree with you fully. Uh, Welsh Toro is saying, Agavite, open the Elmer. Um, Menos Multimission is saying, indeed, the standard 12 is subtle, the 8 all are also not so much. Yeah, contrast, the Coquerans, huge contrast. Um, I want to make a wee bit of a big deal about something here, uh, with a wee small word of warning. There's lots of sharing and things goes on. I give away samples regularly. We have to be a wee bit careful about that. We have to make sure that we know the people that we are sending samples to or exchanging samples with. It's just good practice, not least because you need to make sure that they're of age to drink alcohol wherever they live and they're in a legal country to, for you to be able to ship your sample to. All of those uh, careful things. But when those checks are in place and when we get into the mood where we want to share, um, I do try and encourage it. It's very difficult for me to do in the, ch the channel. It's very difficult for me to do inside Facebook. If Facebook got a hold of that kind of stuff going on, they would they would shut us down quite quickly. Certainly, we can't sell samples. We can't trade samples or alcohol in these platforms. We have to be clever about it. We have to do it on a personal exchange and not put any channels, any social media feeds or anything at risk over it. So please be careful. Hoyt has just bought me a dram. He said, happy three years. Looking forward to three more years at least. Have you ever tried the Middleton Dar uh, Dargilach? I haven't. Uh, I know that's Irish Gaelic, so I'm not sure how I would pronounce it. Um, I haven't tried it, but I do have a sample of it. There's a sample of it in the box down there because I was going through the samples earlier today and somebody sent it to me, Hoyt. Was it you? Thank you so much for your uh, virtual drama, friend. And Royal 431 you star has also bought me a virtual drama and said, eh, a pleasure to meet you recently, along with Vicky Thompson. Is that who you are? Fantastic. Eh, happy leather anniversary. Is that what it is? Is that the anniversary? Is it's leather is how you mark a three-year anniversary. Um, so thank you so much to uh, Royal 431 and Hoyt Hempel. Slanchiba. It's a pleasure to hang out with you guys in the pot still recently as well. I've been bumping into a few people in the pot still recently. I've been out a few times. It's kind of cool. But yeah, let's be careful about the way we exchange samples. Having said that, can I talk to you about something that's happening in the Aquavitae Barflies group? Um, I'm going to pour a dram, a very, very specific dram. This is how much I'm enjoying. Yeah, I care an eight-year-old. I have shared this heavily, but I haven't shared this much. Most of this has been with me or, or over the last few days. It's been shared heavily over uh, burn season. This uh, whiskey was enjoyed with quite a few haggis <laughs> dinners to celebrate burns. I'm going to pour this Kilkerran 8 and I'm going to point out that I have a full bottle over here on the shelf and tell you where that came from. Dancing Midgey, who's in the community, he's a barfly, reached out to me and said, Roy, can I make a gift to you? I'd like to gift to you a bottle of Kilkerran 8. Um, I bought uh, a few when I had the opportunity, and I'm feeling a bit guilty about hogging it, he said, because I was fully keeping it for myself. But when I realized that there was lots of people out there trying to get a hold of it, maybe you know a better thing to do with it. Can I? Can I gift a bottle to you? And uh, through your sharing, you can eventually share it out with the community. And I went back to him and I said, thank you so much, but no, can I buy it from you instead? Tell me what, how much you would like or cost or whatever it is. And eventually we got into that awkward discussion <laughs> where we made an exchange. We made an exchange. And through discussing, um, this is fantastic, through discussing, with Glenn, Dancing Midgey, uh, I found out that he lost his mum to dementia on Christmas Day. And as part of the exchange, he asked if I would be kind enough to raise a glass and ask the barflies to raise a simultaneous glass and make a toast to Isa in her memory and say, Dancing Midgey, that was a wonderful, wonderful gesture. I'm very sorry for your loss, but I'll be happy to raise a glass to Isa. I say you don't know how wonderful a drama it is to toast. We chatted further. And what he wants to do, look at that, lighten up everybody saying to Isa. 
I hope you're here, Glenn. I hope you're in tonight. Um, if you're not, I'm sure you'll catch it on the replay. Um, but we got chatting a wee bit further as well. And what Glenn wants to do is through the Aqua Vitae Barflies group, if you contact him, he's going to make a post this evening if he's not already made it. Um, and you'll be able to email him directly. And if you've not been able to get your hands on Coquerin 8, because it's just evaporated um, uh, from, I think there was only maybe three and a half, four thousand 4,000 bottles of this. Is that right? Maybe it was more. Springbank usually do up nine, ten thousand more. Um, so that may be a mistake. I might be getting confused with another one. But it, it has largely evaporated. Uh, certainly in the UK, it's very difficult to get your hands on now. So Glenn kind of wanted to share uh, another bottle that he has, and he just wants to cover his costs. So through the Aquavite Barflies Group, um, you can contact him to uh, arrange a sample to buy a sample. But he's not going to take the money himself for it. What he wants to do instead is have a donation go to Dementia UK. Um, and all you have to do is show Glenn that you've made a donation um, in memory of Isa. And he'll send you a dram that you might otherwise not be able to get a hold of very easily. I think it's a very cool thing to do. So reach out through the Aquavite Barflies page get a hold of Glenn, but remember that any trading, any discussion of trading or anything can't happen in that in that group. It has to happen on a personal connection between you two, just good practice. Whiskey Influencers is saying 15,000 bottles of the 2019 eight-year-old. That makes much more sense. I wonder what I was thinking about when I was talking about the three and a half thousand. Um, I think I was talking about the other bottle that I wanted to have next to me. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to stare at an empty seat because I just have to grab this and share it with you. I forgot to bring it along. I'll get it. Talk amongst yourself for one moment. kind of hinted that there would be some dead air tonight, right? So there you go. It was this bottle I was getting confused with. I wanted to talk to you about this. This is a North Star, a Glasgow independent bottler. They, they're famous for the Vega brand. I just I just uh, reviewed one in the last Recycle Review, which is a sherry cask blended malt whiskey. Well, this, I can assure you, is very much bourbon cask. It's fully, fully, fully bourbon cask. This is a 31-year-old blended malt, 31 years old. We don't know what's in it. We don't know where it's from. It's not important. Um, if you like bourbon flavours, specifically, there's lots of first fill bourbon notes on the front. It's a 31-year-old, so perhaps the way it's been vatted or something. I don't know any details about it. Um, but I kind of enjoyed this at the beginning, but as I got through this, I started to really, really, really enjoy it. And also enjoy the fact that you can buy this from about £116 for a 31-year-old whiskey. Um, it's a wee bit more expensive than the whiskey exchange right now, cheaper on Master Malt. Um, but this is available widely everywhere um, throughout the UK and Europe, and perhaps there might even be some in the States. But this is 3,500 bottles. But when I started to tear through this almost as fast as I've been tearing through the Coquerin 8, I realized that this would be a nice one to have a wee backup bottle of as well. This is the one that's three and a half thousand bottles. There you go. So thanks for that whiskey influencer. Thanks for telling us. Um, thanks for telling us uh, that it is indeed 15,000 uh, 15, bottles of Coquerin 8. Let's see if I've missed anything while I was away. Neil Cochran seems to think Coquerin 8 was 9K. wonder if it was 15,000 globally and 9K in the UK and Europe. 
Ben Marnock has seen Kilkenny 12 went down well at Taste and I did last Thursday. Beat Kilhome and Sanic, hands down, amongst 25 people. Ah, uh, yeah. I think Sanic is a decent core dram for Kilhoman, but I don't think it's the best offering. I wonder... Um, I tend to enjoy uh, different versions. But it's interesting that the Coquerin 12, because Coquerin 12 is not always an obvious dram. It can behave a little bit subtly, depending on uh, what company that you sip it in. But as you know, I've, I've talked about Coquerin at length, and you know how much I love it. Eric, wait. Aquavite, what is the VPUB? In terms of virtual drams, communication, and meeting, it is one step away from living in the Star Trek universe. Next, transporters to send bottles. That'd be a great thing, Eric, a great thing. Welcome in, my friend. Good to see you. Um, yeah, I do want to talk a wee bit of uh, um, what, what I think the VPUB is, what it is for me. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Legg is saying not everywhere. Uh, Sorry to hear, Jimmy. Um, I know that Jimmy's in uh, Western, uh, sorry, Eastern Canada, and I know that it can be quite tricky for him to locate some bottles. Whiskey influencers are saying, no, thank you for recommending the Anarch 24. Just opened it, and it's fantastic. The Anarch 24 was tight to me when I first opened it. It didn't, I wasn't sure. I was kind of like, oh. And as it went, probably so much to do with me, right? But as I went on through that bottle, my goodness. Now, if that was in limited quantity, and it probably is, <laughs> that would have broken my no by January rules as well. But I'm hoping I can get into February or beyond before I... But I will replace that Anoc 24. Again, just over £100 for a 24-year-old single malt. It's 46%. The label says that it's unchill filter. The label says that it's natural colour. Literally everything that we're asking for, and the price as well. And the people that review it love it. Now, it's interesting, I've been asked a lot of questions about, honestly, price for price, if they were both the same, would you buy the Anoc 24 or the Kregelichy 23 that you threw away? I had a complaint that the Kregelichy 23 is £380 plus in the UK now, and that just makes it a, a no-go. It's just, it's not for me. That's for people who have money and don't need to care about money. If the price of those two whiskies were the same and affordable, yes, the Kregelichy 23 would probably be um, my... Eight days out of ten, let's say, favourite. But the Anok 24, given the presentation, given the quality, given the uniqueness of that whiskey, given the flavours that are in there, it's compelling. It's really, really compelling. Um, and I would hate to think that anybody would buy that Anok 24 and be disappointed, especially at that price point. And if they are disappointed, are disappointed like so many bottles, just give it a little bit of time. It comes alive with time. Menno is saying, for a moment, I was afraid you were coming back with a Macallan Folio 5. Not a chance. Chris B said, 3,582 bottles of that serious. Absolutely. Um, on the nose, the serious is very fresh bourbon. Um, there's lots of bourbon notes. There's lots of kind of roasted peanut. Uh, lots of sweetness. Lots of kind of uh, butterscotch and caramel. When you sit with it, there's a texture that's there that sets the, the mid palate development through the finish. That's what hooked me. That's what got me going back for more. It's a Moorish dram. Where, where, when I was first connecting with it, I thought this is a bit sweet. It's maybe just a single dram um, uh, whiskey. But as I spent time with it, I started to get really into, you know that thing where texture and mouthfeel just play such a big part of the experience, but it's not often talked about. Um, I was enjoying that from that series. Skippy Van Pobb is in and saying, howdy, good to see you, Scott. Uh, Chris B, thank you so much for pointing out um, how many. Yeah, 3,582. Now, I don't know if that's the 700 ml bottles. I don't know if there's going to be more uh, in 750 ml or whatever. It's blended malt. But there should be plenty to, to be getting on with because it's not a, bland, uh, a brand Sorry, that, that uh, everybody knows. Everwind is here saying, ahoy. Uh, Aquavida, you should open a bottle that you drank on your first stream, if possible, and make it a trad tradition. Grats on three years. Everyone, that's a great idea. Isn't it a shame that I have no idea what I drank on my first stream? I do know what I drank on my first uh, ever video, uh, but I don't have any of that. Uh, Neil Cochran is saying, Aquavida, get the Anok quickly. It'll soon be 400 plus. I don't think so. 
Um, I hope not. And and you know, it's kind of the frustration that once reputation builds and once there's a, a kind of clamour for certain bottles, that people get a wee bit a wee bit greedy. Producers get a wee bit greedy, I guess, and they do bump the prices up. But as a community, all we can do is remember we're just a small sliver of a small sliver of a small sliver of a small niche um, thing that is whiskey. Um, so let's, if we talk about it and if we evangelise about those whiskies, at least we, we, the barflies, us, we get a chance to get our hands on it first while it is still affordable. And that's the only way you can approach these things, I think. Um, Donner Pass Whiskey, good to see you in time. saying, just finished my first Anarch 18. Would love to try the 24. You would be very, very uh, well placed. Um, to spend your money there if it's if it's good value in the states as well, Tim, where you are. I'm looking at this uh, Facebook thing and wondering what's going on down in Facebook. If you're watching this in Facebook, um, most of the live chat that I'm interacting with, the lounges I call it, all the barflies hanging out in this lounge here, are here in YouTube. Um, I'm wondering how to do the same on Facebook. It's new to me. Trying new things tonight. I'll maybe work it out as it goes on. Mendit Fox is here saying, you had a Glenalchy, Ralphie, in the background a few months ago. Have you tried it? Uh, it's still up here. It's still up. Um, I don't know. Where can I? There's the camera. <laughs> it's here. The Glenalchy, the Ralphie Glenalchy is up there. It's still not open. You could bully me into open that, opening up that tonight. But I have tried that. I've tried it a couple of times. I've had samples and drams of it. I'm very aware what's in that bottle. Where is this Elmer T. Lee? I'm curious. Uh, Whiskey Novice is saying, uh, Johnny, as spirits people, shared electric 13 in a blade challenge with me just on the subject of texture and mouthfeel. It was a great example of what can be achieved. I wonder if it was one of the single malts of Scotland ones. Um, quite a Marmite thing. It's one of those whiskies that you either love or you hate. Um, but, the, but I loved it. The one that I threw away in a recycled review recently. Uh, wonderful. But it was very, very bold. So the mouthfeel, the alcohol was was shouting louder often than the mouthfeel for that on that electric 11 that I threw away. So it was quite spicy and grippy and prickly, um, but I loved it. I loved it. Okay, I do want to mention something. There's a channel out there just now, uh, Jim, Jim Ingram in Northern Ireland. The channel is called Whiskey Novice. And uh, Jim uh, recently has, a, I'm always kind of looking for channels that are gonna, that are trying to bring something that's a wee bit different and unique. And I was really struck by his most recent series. He was actually doing a series of uh, videos uh, based on uh, whiskies that you can't easily get a hold of. That is because they're, uh, uh, they're, they're exclusive to certain areas or whatever it may be. But he was just talking about whether or not it's uh, worthy of tracking them down. I'm going to copy his link. And I want to see he's invested uh, and his, and his setup, he's invested in lighting, he's invested in audio, he's invested in backdrops, he's got some uh, video moving and he's got some green screen going on. And I found watching Jim the other night just very relaxing and I enjoyed what he was putting out, I enjoyed what he was doing. I'm going to, I've pasted in the chat, I've pasted in the, the lounge there, the link to Jim's channel. The guy's only on 50 subs. And uh, I think if you wanted a, a, a gentleman with a fine beard and a finer accent to hang out with and talk a wee bit about whiskey, I think uh, it might be worthy of you going over. I don't mind you stepping out of the VPUB for a minute to go over and give Jim a wee sub. And then when you have time a bit later or whatever, go and watch, I would recommend the most recent one, the Glen Goyne 14 year old, which is one I did in the recent recycled review as well. Um, spend a bit of time listening uh, to the dulcet tones of Jim Ingram and tell us what you think and leave some feedback for Jim as well. He's a gentleman too. I don't mind you stepping out of the VPUB if you have to go and give Jim a wee sub. Um, but yeah, that was an interesting thing that, that Glenn Goyne because uh, that's one of these things that only, you can only buy in the UK if you went to Marks and Spencer's. 40%, 14-year-old Glen Goyne from, a, from an El Oloroso uh, maturation. However, Glen Goyne as part of their core range brought back the 10-year-old exclusively Oloroso, 40%. So if you're looking for something light, if you're looking for something to give to people uh, uh, for £30 or less, sherry cask maturation, fairly young age, 10 years old, a good age, 
Um, the Glengoyne 10 year old is very good. And I, I have yet to try. I believe that they're doing a, an exclusive Tam Do for Marks and Spencers now. But I've yet to try their Tam Do. Um, so fantastic. Yes. Uh, give Jim a wee bit of your time and uh, let us know how you're getting on. Okay. Um, the smell of this cocaine is literally filling. Filling the room. Late 2016, I started to write little pieces that I thought I could share blog style with whiskey. And as I'm writing these articles, I realized that number one, I wasn't a very good writer. <laughs> number two, I, it wasn't giving me the enjoyment that I imagined. I was having to go back to the articles time and time again and, and make them a wee bit better each time because of the concepts that I was trying to get across. One of these concepts was, was the pronunciation of Scotch whisky. And I realized quite quickly that there's just no way I could do that. I was imagining an audio recording and things. And then I realized I was just going to have to pony up and face my demons and do something on YouTube. I was going to have to do something in front of camera um, on video. And I'd been thinking about it a wee while and I'd been getting pushed by uh, people close to me that to consider it. And that was 2016. That's how, on the 31st of January 2017, eventually I created a channel and called the channel Aquavite after the Instagram account that I'd had for a number of years. And DC is saying, yeah, I came across this channel last week and subscribed. Nice, relaxed channel. Greg's Whiskey Guide said, I had Aquavite, that 14-year-old going and Tam do as well, reviewed them, but finally decided to enhance them with some older stuff from the same distillery. Yeah, because the light... Uh, they're, they're light in body, and they're also light in ABV as well, Greg. I can see why you would fortify the Glen Goyne with something stronger and still have a single malt. Lunara and St. Leanne just said that Jim boosted 100 subs. You guys are awesome. Jim will be pouring something fine. I don't even know if he's in still. He's probably fantastic. Such great support. Um... It's nice to, nice to share the love now and again. Um, but like I say, it's, it's Jim, he's obviously passionate about whiskey and he's loving whiskey and he's got a nice canny approach and he's up for sharing and he's up for spreading the love himself and things. But when you see that investment going into the channel and you see him, um, uh, it sparked something in him that he's enjoying and he wants to share, you kind of want to encourage that. YouTube will get better and better and better as the community grows, but the community is only going to grow if the creators bring their best stuff. They need to bring stuff that makes people come into YouTube, that makes YouTube a quality place to consume and share whiskey. Um, not just uh, not just have kind of reviews and scores, but have have uh, sharing and have information and have education and have insight and a bit of fun and a wee bit of entertainment as well. Um, YouTube, I think as time has gone on, it's, be, it's becoming... It's being taken more and more seriously. Certainly, I'm finding that at this channel. Um, people are taking it seriously, but it does take effort. And I appreciate to all of the YouTube creators out there, believe me, I know just how much effort it takes. Um, but the channels that are putting in effort really deserve to grow because some of the channels are really, really working hard. No more than Whiskey Jason over in Germany saying, just ordered the Anarch 24. Thanks, Roy. <laughs> oh, dear Jason. <laughs> Let me know how you got on with it. I hope you really love it. Whiskey Whistle Mark is saying, it's been a multi-slice Aquavite. Time to throw a kid number one in the minivan and get her to Bali. Mark, thanks so much for joining, my friend. Thanks for stopping by a wee while. Mark, it's Whiskey Whistle. Mark's Whiskey Whistle over in Canada. I'm sure everybody knows Mark Kaufman um, and the, the fact that he's, be, he's been doing YouTube for way longer than me. He must have been going probably a year before I started, and he's still going strong. Mark Slanjava. Get that kid to the ballet class. Ben Marnock is saying, oops, sorry, Ben, it just disappeared. McLeod's flipped the Tamdu 12 for m &S to a 10-year-old. The 12 is now on general release, not m &S exclusive. That's right, Tamdu is now doing a, a, their standard. That's right. And their core used to be a 10-year-old, so I guess the 10-year-old is now an M&S exclusive. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for the insight. Ben uh, is, uh, has a role in the industry and sometimes has wee tidbits of nice insider info there. 
Uh, <laughs> Whiskey novice Jim is saying, I'm near crying here. Can't thank the barflies enough. Truly humbled. You need to bring it, Jim. The pressure's on you now, my friend. You need to bring it. You need to keep the barflies and your own wee community uh, content and happy to dram along with you. I wish you all the best, my friend. Well done. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, 2016, 2017, 31st of July, I decided to have to make this YouTube channel. And the two videos that I made were kind of project videos. One was to compare single grain whiskies and its value against malts. That was whiskey number one. And the second one was a kind of more uh, single malt kind of budget versus more premium uh, blind tasting mashup. Kind of think of it as a precursor to what became the blind challenge, I guess, uh, that we were doing here. And this was me kind of building up to, to tackling um, this format of recycled reviews that I'd been playing with for a while. Um, and then pronunciation of Scotch whiskey. And I knew that pronunciation was something that I was just going to have to do on video. And that was my that were that was my first four videos. And I kind of made some more recycled reviews. I made a follow-up to the pronunciation video. I did some other projects. Um, but as the year was building on and we were all starting to collaborate in things, I was there were I was bereft of a live stream on the European time zone. I wanted a live stream, I wanted something that where I could get my fix. And I realized that perhaps it was down to me to do it. So I went live at quarter to 10. That's why the, the, the VPUB is at quarter to 10 of an evening, because that's the time that the first one went live. I went live at 9.45 um, without any announcement and just kind of stared at the camera. And 37 people turned up to hang out with me. I was just blown away. I was absolutely blown away. We had a discussion. The time flew by. It was all whiskey focused. Nobody wanted to talk about politics, religion, the news, anything that could potentially divide. They wanted to talk about whiskey. And I realized that that's exactly what I wanted. And that's what I envisaged that if I decided to do the VPUB every couple of weeks, I could do the VPUB every couple of weeks and get that fix. And maybe I could share the baton with other channels. Very quickly, there were some uh, things that came along that made it clear that it was going to be best served for me to drive it and push it forward. And I did. But then it morphed quite quickly because of input from you guys. I, I was really afraid of dead air. So I wanted to always have a theme. I was really afraid of a lack of structure. So I wanted to have this theme that would build up to a quiz at the end and it would help people perhaps hang around. I figured that I could do an hour to 90 minutes and now I'm struggling to keep it below two hours. All of these things came along, the culture that built up, the language, the friendliness, the sharing, the welcome uh, that, that you were offering, all the new names that came in, all of that came from you guys. Ebhead Rolf, um, I've met you a few times, Rolf, as a star. I, the, the only way I know you is through doing this thing. It's amazing. The best thing this VPUB is, is that you can go down to the pub without getting, <laughs> getting dressed. Seriously, thanks, Roy, for creating this fantastic community and for bringing us all together. I often say, and I know it's getting a bit cheesy now to hear it, and this is a very self-indulgent topic tonight. Let's face it. Thank you for uh, putting up with it. Uh, but I keep saying that this is a, a privilege. I'm very grateful uh, to have had this opportunity and to have so much support from you guys. But Rolf, Ebhead, Slancha, and thank you so much for your drama. Quickly enter up just to talk about Limburg. We're all going into Limburg at the end of April over that weekend, the Saturday and the Sunday, which is, I think, the 25th and 26th of April, I think. Flying in on the Friday, coming home on the Monday, it, it's exploded. It's There's lots and lots of barflies going in to Frankfurt and taking the trip through to Limburg um, to hang out for that weekend. I'm super excited about that. So many of you, even my friend Bill, who was in the Isla video, is coming over from California for it. My brother is going to, I guess he's going to learn what this is all about, the, this kind of... Um, culture that's built up, this kind of whiskey culture thing. He loves whiskey. It's going to be easy to lead him. Um, but he's coming along as well. I, I'm super excited about Limburg. I'm super excited about the amount of guys that are going to be there all together. And if it's anything like Frankfurt last year, it's going to be wonderful, wonderful fun. Um, 
looking forward to seeing uh, to seeing you all there. Uh, George Braley is saying yeeha. Matt McCann final is saying yes. Scott Smart is saying, could we have the themes of February and March uh, be the different Scotch regions? One region per stream, please. So I've, Scott Smart, it's super interesting. I've got a wee list of topics, general video to topics anyway. And what I used to have, I used to have a, a, a list that I would preserve just for uh, pre-recorded edit content, but that's the hardest thing to do. It's the hardest thing I find to do in terms of time. Um, so I was butchering that and I was stealing from that regularly for VPUB themes. And then I quickly realized that they can coexist. You can do a VPUB based on that theme and then you can quickly uh, do a much more succinct, short, edited video and release it if you ever get the time to do such a thing. So I was quite liberal about butchering my, my video list in order to mine it for VPUB themes. And that's exactly one of the themes uh, that you could go through on a run up to the summer break or something like that. You could go through the Scotch whiskey regions and kind of explore um, perhaps an individual character, something that you might think that's a generic uh, space side style, let's say, but then explore all the diverse different uh, expressions uh, that, that revolve around that through the samples that I have, through the collection that I have or whatever it may be, but also maybe try to plan it far enough in advance for a drama long so that I could share with you some of the whiskies that I was going to sip to explore these uh, variations in flavour and style and that, you know, we have to remember just how open regions can be, that the regionality is not really fixed at all, certainly not anymore. So that is a, a very good idea. Uh, thanks, Gogsmab. I think it's a good idea. Peter Eichen is saying, thought the VPUB may be tricky for some of us to catch, as it's, but uh, to catch is always worth the effort. There is always the replay if we miss the live. Thanks, Roy. Peter, thank you. Slanchevar, my friend, I agree with you completely. And I'm always very grateful to the folk who do spend time picking it up on the replay. Just little chunks of time on their commute. Um, on, in the evening, when they find five minutes, they just sit down and they catch up in little installments. Neil Cochran, my friend Neil, is in saying, Aquaviti, Roy. I love the VPUB. It's great, but in many ways we are still in the foothills. In another few years, where will it be? Can't wait. It will be good. Neil, if I want to grow this, listen, I'm never short of ideas. I'm always short of time. I, I'm working on things right now in the channel and, and I've been a wee bit fortunate um, in terms of time over the last week or so, hence been able to get the recycled review out and things. Um, I've managed to squirrel a wee bit more time and I'm editing right now. Uh, but my ideas for the channel going forward, um, I'm super, super excited about. I, I, it's, and it's not because I want to switch it up and I want to constantly change things. The things that are working, I want to preserve as much as I can. And if I do make changes, they have to be refinements. They can't be wholesale switch it up changes. But I do have some new ideas. I have new ideas for things to share with you and uh, things to help uh, reward uh, patrons um, and things to the video content that, that nobody else is doing. I, I have ideas, but like everything, I just need to get my head around it and make sure that it's cohesive and it works and it fits with the, the rest of the channel and it's something fun for you guys as well. Uh, but thank you so much, Neil. Thank you so much. I'm interested to see uh, where it goes as well. So what the VPUB, what this quickly became is what it is now. And and that is, um, it's, I'm completely isolated, of course. I just see a, a chat scrolling like you guys do. It's difficult to comprehend that there are over 200 of you hanging out in, in various spots all over the world. And you've got this little pocket of time, this ring, ring fence time on a Thursday evening or whenever it is that you pick up these things, just to hang out and just have a bit of whiskey chat. Now, I fully understand that tonight's VPUB will not be that interesting on the replay because there isn't any kind of theme or content beyond just celebrating, hanging out together. But I've got a few um, quotes from the guys inside uh, Patreon and things that I wanted to share with you because what these guys were saying pretty much summed it up for me uh, and a lot of it is much better than I could say it myself. But Graham Young said, the VPUB always seems to bring me back to Glasgow. 
It feels like sitting across the table with some dear friends, sharing the business of the day and a good drama or two. It feels like it makes all well in my world for that brief time that it is. So that was exactly the idea. And it's so cool that Graham has been here in Glasgow to hang out with us in real life, so to speak. And he gets that kind of fix and he realizes that the people that he's hanging out with are real people and genuine, honest people. Uh, Simon Ray inside Patreon has also said, I find the topics covered through the VPUBs really informative. Thank you, Simon. The recent one on flavor was a classic example of this, as well as being educational, they're also good fun. My experience of joining the VPUB is a bit like moving to a new area, not uh, knowing no one, venturing into your local pub, and over time, establishing a new friendship group. I've had the opportunity to chat, exchange samples, and perhaps for me, the highlight today translating the virtual world into reality through the Glasgow meetup in November. I've gone from somebody who largely enjoyed whiskey on my own to being linked to an ever-expanding community and my whiskey experience is all the better for it. I fully agree with everything you're saying. That's why the celebration of last year, the last VPUB uh, in December was all about that, that, that rendering this virtual thing, that VPUB and making it real. I fully, fully agree. Uh, Christopher James Warren from Facebook said, I no longer have to drink alone. This is Everwind. I drink with a bunch of friends that share a common interest in whiskey and I tend to learn a bit along the way. That's what I like to raise a toast from now and again and say tonight you don't have to drink alone. Uh, there's nothing wrong with drinking alone. There's nothing better sometimes than a quiet dram. The evening is late. The lights are low. It's just you and you're literally inside that glass in that moment. It's fantastic. But it's good to share. There's nothing like sharing whiskey. It's what the channel is built on. One day I aspire to get a high score in the quiz, but that is okay. It's great fun. I aspire to that too, believe me. Willie Dollar on Facebook is saying the VPUB is a real community without borders. We don't recognise borders. We don't recognise any divisions, any limitations. We're here for the whiskey, and that unites. Menno inside Patreon is saying, I started, I like, these are, this is, Menno's comment summed it up better than, than anything I could have said. I started following your channel. Sorry how self-indulgent self this is all tonight. I apologize. It's kind of cool just to take a step back and appreciate what we have in whiskey, what we have as a community. I cannot find another community out there that is as generous and kind uh, as we are. And you know what? If I choose to celebrate three years of the channel saying thank you for that, I think it's okay. Um, we'll try and get some interaction going in a wee minute and get some whiskey chat going. But Menno says, I started following your channel a good two and a half years ago. Believe it or not, that was at a time when there weren't plus 100 channels active. I guess he's talking about whiskey tube channels. I get it completely. But it was already pretty obvious you came from a different angle as a whiskey tuber, and I really liked what I saw. Thank you, Menno. It was original, honest, and done with a lot of knowledge, integrity, and love for whiskey. He's saying, I didn't immediately connect with the first VPUBs, though. This is a common theme. As the idea of a tour live feed seemed a bit challenging to squeeze into my schedule, two young kids and all that. Believe me, I feel your pain. But spread out over multiple sessions, I watched them on replay and I got hooked. At first, by the mere content, so I started to tune in. First, lurking in a corner, then interacting with you and the occasional barfly. And then you notice the same names popping up in the comments and on other channels. So you start to interact more and more. And from the occasional chat, you gradually become part of a community of fellow whiskey geeks who love to nerd out as much as you do. So the VPubs became a place to meet up, to connect, both online and in real life. This is going to sound cheesy, Roy, but basically you've become Cheers, where everybody knows your name, with the Doc as Fraser and Sevy and Scott as Norm and Cliff and so on. I thought that was fantastic, Menno. I thought it was fantastic. And I think that the reason that I get excited about sitting in front of you guys every other week and hanging out and sharing what I'm doing in whiskey, sharing whiskey themes in general and hanging out with you is all of this. Uh, fantastic. Mikey Hayes saying, stop apologising. Uh, uh, Orange Will is saying, you certainly don't need to apologise. Chris Mir is saying, no need to apologise. Whiskey Novice is saying, don't apologise. Okay, I get the message, guys. Um, yes. 
Uh, Whiskey Straight Alice saying that was first class. If not for this platform, says Leanne Scotch the Bayou, I wouldn't have such uh, wonderful whiskey peeps. So very thankful. I'm thankful to Leanne. Scott is saying, would be very cool. Skippy Van Pobb is saying, it would be very cool if we were all in a pub somewhere in Scotland meeting for the first time. Well, the only thing that's stopping that happening is time, money, distance. <laughs> But these, it can happen. It might not. It might not happen that we're all together at the same time. But if I've got anything to do with it, I'm going to continue pushing for events. That's why the Aquavita Barflies Facebook group is in existence to encourage people wherever you are. If you're going to a distillery in Kentucky, if you're going to a distillery in Scotland, if you're going to an event, a club meeting, starting a club, anything that brings people together around whiskey in real life, that's what that Barflies group is about. It's, it's happening in Belgium. It's happening down south in England. The London Whiskey Club is a wonderful, powerful example of that. Um, it, it's just anywhere where we are going, we share it in there and say, look, if anybody's going to be here, let's hang. Is anybody in my area that we can start a club? Whatever the theme is, if it's talking about getting together to further your, your whiskey experiences, that has to be celebrated. And Chris from up the road is saying, you do need to apologise. You still haven't opened something. Thank you for keeping me in line. What am I opening, Chris? Am I opening this Elmer T. Lee or am I opening something else? Uh, do you need me to tell you what I've got in the background? Or can you see North Star bottles? I've got uh, lots of Texas whiskey hanging about. I've got lots of American whiskey. I've got Alabama whiskey up here. I've got... Uh, Lefroy cast strength. I've got the Dell back. I've got is that a, a long row from Kilted Moose from Moose from Scott Monroe. Actually, there's a couple of Scott Monroe bottles up there. And why is that long row from Scott Monroe? What the year? I'm suddenly wavering. Uh, up here, I've got more American Texas whiskies. I've got Graham Young's. Do you want to see how that's getting along? This is open, but it's finally starting to take a wee bit of colour. But I think um, I've got a dud piece of applewood in this because it's really not colouring up much at all. Should be colouring up much, much more than that, but it's finally starting to take a wee bit of colour on. But this is open, I've already opened this. Uh, I've got a bunch of stuff. Let's see what you're asking me to. Elmer T. Lee says, Charlie Loftus, uh, open everything and make it a blend, Brian. Uh, come on. <laughs> the whiskey bowman is saying, go for the Elmer. Okay, I think it's obvious. I just need to uh, take this Elmer T. Lee. Wow, everyone is saying, Aquaviti, I just looked and you were drinking Deanston Virgin Oak and the Tomatin because I think it was on the back of the video that I just put out to talk about um, uh, non age statements that were worthy of your attention. And I've since proved it with that Tomatin Legacy, don't you think? Because in the Blind Challenge, I, I slipped that in in December and it was picked by two of the tasters as being uh, their dram of the five up against some big hitters such as 25-year-old Mortlack and the like. Yes, powerful wee weapon that tomato and legacy can be at times. Let's get a clean glass. An Aquavitae glass. I've not got my camera up. One of the Aquavitae glasses. And open this uh, Elmer T. Lee. I think this is a great bottle to open. Happy to pour little samples and share. Let me think of ah, good. Let me think of something. Wow. Whoa. Square bottle. with dimples in the side. We'll see what it says in the back. Elmer T. Lee, with 50 years experience, has produced some of the finest bourbons ever bottled. This is his own private selection. 90 proof. Distilled, aged and bottled at Buffalo Trace Distillery, Frankfurt, Kentucky. Now I'm following a very powerful Kilcarran 8 cast strength. 
Let's have a wee sip of this Dil Ewan. And let's leave this wee Elmer T. Lee. To open up a little bit, see how we got on. <laughs> Menno is saying that's a proper glug. None of that Aaron nonsense. I held it right up at the mic to make sure that you could um, hear it okay. Fantastic. Do you know what else I've got to do tonight? Talking about giving things away. There was a recycled review a week or so ago, and there was heels giveaway. I don't think I'll be doing that again. Honestly, I need to find another thing uh, because there was a. Uh, I'll, you'll see in a minute. I'm going to draw that just now. Uh, there's uh, 19 heels. So I'm going to divide it up. I'm going to uh, split it up into, you know, giving the bulk of it to the first winner. And then there'll be two sets beyond that that goes to that goes to patrons. So I've got two separate, three separate draws to make. One is the main heels please draw. Um, and then the rest I'll divide up uh, between patrons. But I can tell you there were 572 entries from almost 500 comments in that recycled review. So it was very, very difficult um, to put that together. You can imagine the time that's involved. So I need to find a more automated way of doing it. But I also need to think about how, um, how I want to do giveaways in general in the future. But nevertheless, I promised you a Heels Please giveaway. Um, and I always draw it in a VPUB live stream. And I'm going to try to do that now. So let's see if I can do a screen share. And you should be able to see 572. And uh, through a random sort, it's actually Glenn dancing midgy. It's at the end there. I'm just going to randomize it again one more time. So you can see that there's nothing untoward going on. And that's changed the order of that. If you see names that are in there multiple times, that's how you take less than 500 comments and make it more than uh, 500 entries because patrons get additional bonus entries. So what's happened here is patrons have en entered in through the comments as well and they get their bonus entries, so it ends up being more. But I'm going to use my virtual assistant like I always do. Uh, let's uh, try this. Hey, Siri. Give me a random number between 1 and 572. A random number between 1 and 572 is 11. Wow, 11. She sounded nervous there, didn't she? Is she nervous? Right, uh, I'm going to do a quick screen share for you guys to see. And I'll scroll right up to 11. I've already done the randomization. So I'll scroll all the way up to number 11 and tell you Vicky Thompson. <laughs> well done, Vicky. You've just bagged yourself a bag of heels. Well done. Congratulations to you. I don't know if you're in tonight, Vicky. But I managed to meet up with Vicky in the pot still in Glasgow very recently. Um, <laughs> shame this never happened before then. I could have just handed them to you. But Vicky, I'll pack up your samples. There are eight heels um, to be sent along to you. Um, so I'll, I'll get these packed up and I'll send along your eight samples from the Recycled Reviews. Congratulations, Vicky. Let's make a note of that. Superb. Well done, Vicky. Um, and I'm going to do the exact same thing if I just click onto the patrons list here. What I'm going to do here is randomize this as well. Uh, 203 we have here. Uh, I've got two to draw here, a, a set of six and a set of uh, five. I think that's right. Yes, a set of six and a set of five. Hey Siri, give me a random number between one and 203. A random number between one and 203 is 125. Okay, 125, scroll up to see who's at 125. Desi, Desi Vleeland as well. Fantastic Desi, well done to you. Congratulations, you've won yourself six heels from my last recycled review. Let's uh, just write that down quickly. And finally, I've got a set of five heels to give away to another patron. I'm just going to randomize that again. And uh, if it's Desi that uh, drew draw again, I'll, I'll just go ahead and, and draw a third time. But we should be fine. Uh, hey, Siri, 
Give me a random number between 1 and 203. A random number between 1 and 203 is 1. Are you kidding? <laughs> 1. It's the second time that's happened. Simon Ray. Congratulations, Simon. Well done to you. Simon, I've met you as well. So the only guy that I've not met out of those three winners are, uh, is Desi. Vicky, I've met. Uh, Simon Ray, I've had the pleasure of meeting too. Congratulations, Vicky. Congratulations, Desi. And congratulations, Simon Ray. Thanks to everybody who entered. That was much, much quicker to draw than it was to put together those lists, believe me. Um, like I say, I need to fathom a different way to do these kind of sharing activities in the future. But there are some really nice heels in those selections, and I hope eh, that you get a chance to enjoy them. Vicky, Simon, and Desi, well done. Congratulations. So let's see what the lounge is saying. Neil Cochran is saying 11 have spinal tap one. Absolutely. You know, I'm sipping bourbon, or I'm about to be sipping bourbon. I'm clearly nosing bourbon here, and it is bourbon. But there's something, this is more subdued. This is much more elegant. There's a kind of sandalwood, dry wood, um, you know when, when you're cutting or sawing nice wood and you get those lovely aromas. McAllen Feiner is saying this time I really wanted to win for Will. Doc, you've already won for Will. There was a student in the comments who was talking about his love for whiskey and how he'd love to win the heels in the comments. And the Doc chimed in and said, if I win the heels, you can have them, which I thought was wonderful. But then he went one stage further and arranged a little sample pack uh, for this guy because the guy was talking about how he wasn't earning yet and couldn't afford so much of the whiskies. And the doc um, said, well, let's have a chat and see if we can work something out. Uh, let's raise a glass to you, doc, and say, well done to you as I go in and have my first sip of Elmer T. Lee. Beautiful, clean, elegant, understated bourbon. It's not. It's not powerful. It's not shouting. What ABV is this? It's light, mid forties, forty-five percent ABV. The, th the flavors that you normally associate with bourbon, where it's kind of heavy, syrupy, sweet, oftentimes the vanillas, the butterscotch and the toffee, they're all very quiet. This is much more like, an, instead, instead of like a big burst of power and flavor, this is all understated and quiet. It's like flickers. Gorgeous, gorgeous bourbon. Where I've been connecting with bourbon that I enjoy, because I don't have much of a experience with bourbon, I, it's, it's not my comfort zone. I'm happy to explore it, I do enjoy it. But the bourbon that's transformed me, the bourbon that's drawn me in has been Jack Daniel's um, single barrel barrel proof, uh, Elijah Craig barrel proof. Uh, you know, the big... Um, Gifts from uh, Dwayne Large, the the Eagle Rare, and uh, Elijah Craig, and things that have been powerful and bold. What's super about this is how uh, how Moorish it is, how delicate, how quiet it is. 
which is actually my favourite style of scotch these days, as you all know. Mm. I need to give you some of this. I need some people to taste this. Stewie Baby saying, did you spend any more time with that Black Friday dram uh, this week? Thoughts? No, I haven't. I poured a couple of samples and I shipped out the samples. Um, I haven't spent much more time with it. I actually hope it gets a wee bit better, so it'll be interesting to go back to you and see how it's getting on. Kevin Bryant is here. Blind tastings is a great thing to have personally learned from your channel and taken to my group of friends, always enlightening and catches us out. Absolutely, absolutely. The caveat with blind tasting is that sometimes, like this, sometimes the ceremony of opening a special bottle, blind tasting won't always do it justice. Sometimes it's nice to be fully aware of how special a dram you are opening whatever that dram may be. Jimmy Leg is saying, uh, lol, looking off into the distance, is that me? Yeah, probably, Jimmy. Chris is saying, for comps, maybe set up a Google Docs page for people to enter their YouTube name. Hey, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. That was Chris, that takes the heavy lifting from me. It is a good idea. Andrew Butler is saying, I once swapped a Blanton's straight from the barrel for an Elmer. The shouty one for the elegant one. Andrew, did you do you feel the same? Do you feel like that's what it is? That it's elegant. The whiskey influencers are saying, okay, send some to New York. Jimmy Legg is saying austere, as Serge would say, austere. Absolutely. Serge is a wonderful guy to read sometimes. Well, all the time, but sometimes he's particularly inspiring to read. Just excellent. Neck pour, excellent. Looking forward to anybody that comes to the house, just demand a dram of Elmer T. Lee. This is getting shared. This is wonderful stuff. Uh, Thomas Elmer is, is here. He's saying, you know how this Elmer T. Lee is so dear to, to find. I believe we can blame Ralphie directly for it becoming popular. Oh, perhaps. I've never even seen Ralphie's review of it. Black Friday got here. Fine. Thanks, my friend. Daniel, I sent one to you. I'm so glad you got it. Whiskey Influencer, is, uh, I think. Do you think the Elmer may seem more subdued since you had been drinking cast strength peated cocaine? Perhaps. Absolutely. It's absolutely a thing. But I'm not getting subdued. I'm getting... There's complexity here. If I sit with this, the, this I'm not speaking about a flat experience. There's vibrance in life here but it's quiet it's complex there's lots going on it's one that you, i'll just have to sit with to try and get my head around and and enjoy kilco brian is saying i have a sample that was given to me of a 31 year old milton duff that i am most scared to open and try because of the age, because of the what, what's making you scared of it. Milton Duff can be a bit up and down, honestly, Brian. But if somebody's given you a sample, I would suggest that it's probably a good one that they want to share with you. Just build up to it. Have a couple of drams beforehand so that you're not going to it with a, a cold, let's say, palate. And uh, just go for it. Thomas Elmer is saying he gave it a 90 after he picked some up on his trip to Canada five or six years ago, I think. Fantastic. Hoyt is saying, okay, this made me open up my bottle of Blanton's. <laughs> Good for you, Hoyt. Let's get the bottles open. Kilko is saying, just because the whiskey is almost as old as I am. Wow. I know how that is. But I think in your journey going forward, Brian, you're going to happen across old whiskey again. Sometimes old whiskey can be fantastic. It's always special. But sometimes... Um, Sometimes it, the, the age is incidental. Um, sometimes older whiskey you have to revere and you have to be careful. It's a special moment. Uh, other times it's nice to just to judge it as openly as, as you possibly can and not let the age of it be a barrier to enjoyment or make you feel like you have to enjoy that whiskey because you don't. Whiskey Weekend Drama is saying electric cast strength, nine year old cast strength in my glass now. Wow, Aquaviti, the same independent bottler from the samples, and congrats on your VPUB three years. It's a great meetup. Thank you so much. Whiskey Weekend Dram, you star. Uh, Neil Cochran saying, Aquaviti, Serge, I usually read over breakfast. Yes. 
Um, you know, back in the, I suppose before I get so wrapped up in the whole uh, video thing, the YouTube thing, um, all the malt maniacs, all those guys, uh, malt, uh, whiskey fun, Serge, you know, I, I was reading those guys regularly. There was a time when I first got into whiskey that the, the main resource for whiskey on the internet uh, was those guys. Everything's changed now, of course. Um, it was what whiskey reviews saying, hello, Roy, glad you're getting a chance to get some Elmer T. Lee. Very nice Aquavite. I'm uh, just looking at the time there. How could it be? How can you? What? How, uh, Jimmy Legacy saying the wood can can get too old whiskey. It sometimes can. Um, and I'm glad Oak and Smoke Whiskey Reviews, I guess, are you a YouTube channel? I feel like you are. And if you've, if you, um, maybe you've reviewed this. Maybe you're very aware of it. I don't think there's too much wood here on, on this one, uh, Jimmy. Um, I, I, th I got the woody note there. I got the kind of, dry wood and I know that sometimes you have to be careful because sometimes people see cut wood and pencil shavings and things as a as a faint as an off note I don't I enjoy it I like it a lot um I, I like the the wood spice um and that's that's here but it's very very delicate it it doesn't taste anything like a daft mill but it interacts on your palate a bit like a daft mill does quiet for the most part. Um, I can't believe I've just compared an Elmer T. Lee to a Daft Mill, um, but hopefully you get what I'm talking about. Yeah, let's drink whiskey saying it. I respect your palate, but I find the Elmer a bit boring. It's higher ABV brother, Rockhill Farms, I find far better. When I'm there in May, if you can make time, I'll bring a bottle. Get in touch with me. And I would say this to anybody who's trying to meet up with me, it's very difficult for me to commit way in advance because the priority and the day jobs always have to come first. But if it's closer to the day, I know when I'm free. And that's when I try and lock things down. Uh, if I know where you're going to be, what you're doing and things, there's a chance that we can meet up. It's something that I always prioritise for patrons first. Um, but I've managed to meet up with so many people over the last couple of years. It's always a pleasure. It's wonderful to hook up. So let's see what we can achieve. And if you're in town, Let's drink whiskey from wherever you're coming from. Maybe the States, it sounds like. It'd be a pleasure. Donald Ranson, Canada, is saying, I used to be precious about old whiskey, but not any longer. Currently sipping some JP Weiser's 23 cast strength while doing housework. Got to try that very uh, expression in Frankfurt last year, Donald. Good for you. Billy Saunders is in. Good to see you, Billy. Shocked at how many of us are still awake and watching. Hey, Aquavite. It is late. It's after 11. It's the V-Pub. V-Pub stays open a wee bit later. Whiskey friend Alan is in, he's saying, have, uh, have you on in the background, Roy? Congrats on the three years, fella. Thank you, Slancha, so much. Thank you, Alan, and thank you for your dram, my friend, Slancha. Three years. It's not, it's not long. The Whiskey Influencer is saying, got the Malt Whiskey Yearbook based on one of your last fee pubs. What a fantastic book of knowledge. Absolutely. Buy it every year. Love it. Love the editorial. Lovely reference. Uh, love the old and closed distilleries. Love the new distilleries. Love the world whiskies. Love the data at the back. It's a great, great, great compact little book. Recommend it to everybody. I buy extra copies and I gift it. I love it so much. And I, there's no affiliate program there. I don't get paid anything for saying that. I get paid nothing from anybody in the whiskey industry. I don't accept samples. That's not true. Sometimes you can't not accept samples. But I actively approach them and say, please don't send me samples. I have more whiskey than I know what to do with. I can't do If you've got something interesting to say about your samples, tell me what's interesting about it. And if it's interesting to me, I'll buy it by myself. And the same goes for the Malt Whiskey Yearbook. Anything you hear me evangelizing about is the exact same as if you were here in my house and I was evangelizing about something. It's not because I'm getting paid to evangelize. It's because I feel like you will get something from it, that you will enjoy it, like this Kilkerran 8, like this serious 31-year-old, like the Malt Whiskey Yearbook, because I think it's valuable to you. I'm funded by you guys. That's the way it's always going to be. Menos Multimission is saying, I try after midnight on the mainland. Good thing I've got a day off tomorrow. <gasps> yes, it is after midnight on the continent. 
Thank you all to all my Europeans for staying up a wee bit late. I think the quiz last week worked very well. I liked having Jason on. I liked his quiz. I got lots of good feedback from you guys about switching up the quiz and doing a different thing. And I've reached out to another channel to see if they want to make a quiz and come on so that because I really, really loved participating in my own quiz, even though I didn't set the questions, of course, I was participating in my own quiz myself. And I'd like to do it again. So I've reached out to another channel and uh, they, they're up for it. They're going to put together some quiz questions. So maybe the next VPUB or later in February or some point in the future, we'll have a guest on to host the quiz. Let me know if you think that's a good idea. I liked it. Tom Good is saying, listen to a bit of Whiskey Novice on my way to pick up the kiddos and I had to stop the Ralphie bit because I couldn't watch while driving, lol. And that's why I'm telling you to go and watch that Glenn, Glenn Goy 14 year old video he did that when he opens up, I gasped. I, I literally gasped and then coughed up a lung laughing. I thought it was superb and I would like to see him do more of that. It was fantastic. It was just fun. And I would like to think that Ralphie would see that and get a, get a kick out of it as well. And at the end of the video, if you wait, if you watch it till the end, he says some nice things about Ralphie as well, which just shows the class of Jim. Martin Kirsch is saying, same here. I bought the 2020 yearbook also. Thank you. Very interesting. Thank you and cheers. You're welcome, Martin. Uh, Billy Saunders saying, did you ever review the bimber behind you? Love to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, yes, I opened it and I opened it on the, the end of year live stream with Andy from Maltbox. We had a nice time with it. I opened it based on him raving about it so much. And I've, can you see how much of that bimber I've got through? Clearly I'm enjoying this stuff. This is, it's not, um, it, this is very good. It's a very good whiskey experience. This is not scotch. There's enough in this that's unique to make you enjoy it and appreciate it for what it is without comparing it to scotch, for enjoying it in its own right. This is a very enjoyable whiskey. I've been giving it to people right and left, and there are very few people that have come back with anything other than very positive feedback from it. I have been enjoying Bimber, and I'm excited to see where these guys go in the future. Uh, whiskey, obviously, saying all bloggers are fair game to me. Love you all. Uh, good for you, Jim. Good for you. I mean, I think that... Um, the problem that we're all having now is bloggers, vloggers, whatever your format is, it's just the sheer amount of them. Um, but uh, I, I like, I, I do like the ones that, that are doing something a wee bit different, adding a layer of value, bringing their own DNA, their own mark to things, something that you can, that intrigues, that makes you want to listen and enjoy. I think it's fascinating to see. It's a very people-driven thing. Andy Garcia is saying, hi, Roy, I would recommend Bamore. Uh, would you recommend Bamore or Port Ellen to take a hotel in Isla? Bamore's more central. I like Port Ellen. I've never stayed down in Port Ellen. I've stayed in Bamore a couple of times. I've stayed further north. Um, I've stayed in Bridge End. Uh, Bamore's good because it's central. But honestly, Isla's not as small as you might imagine when you're driving around. It does take you a wee while to get around the island but it's small enough that you don't need to worry. Wherever you stay on Isla is going to be fine, Ander. Wherever you end up will be, let serendipity have a hand and just go with it. Um, it's nice if you can be walking distance from a pub to relax in the evening, to get a bit of food, something. But more's very good for that. Bridge End is good for that. Port Ellen's good for that. Uh, um, there are a few spots on the island that, that's okay for that. If you're a bit remote, it can be tricky. You have to kind of look after yourself, make sure you've got plenty of food and provisions back there. You can't drink and drive. Um, so, yeah, I would suggest go with the nice accommodation. Go what feels good. Don't worry about it. Greg's Whiskey Guide is honestly, would you prefer the first release to the second one? Me, yes. Um, I only had a wee sample of the first release, Greg, so I didn't spend much time with it. But it's interesting that you say that, and, I, and uh, I'll, I'll trust you on that. I'll, get a chance to spend a bit of time. I've got the first release up there, but it's still sealed. Malcolm Douglas is saying, did you try the late number two, Roy? No, I'm delinquent. I've been told that I have to, Malcolm, um, but I haven't yet. I actually get some stuff here from you, Malcolm, that I haven't tried yet. I've got so many samples, so many samples. Our big supernova, unchill filtered, natural color. I might just pop that here. Maybe pop it open, Malcolm, before I finish tonight. Uh, George Braley saying, 
When's your first private bottling? Ha! There has been, and all the plans that I've got for the channel going forward, certainly in the near future, let's say, that's not even on the horizon. Very fashionable thing to do, though. Scogsmart is saying, how is transportation on Isla if you don't have a willing, dedicated driver with you? Tricky. There are a few taxis um, and companies. There's a bus runs occasionally. Honestly, I would say that um, dedicated driver is your best. And if you're relying on the infrastructure or the, the, the taxis and things that are on the island, you have to be there out of season um, because it can be tough. Uh, you know, that you can imagine that they can't put lots of taxis on Isla because most of the time they just wouldn't get used. Um, but there are taxis there and you can get around, but it needs planning in advance. Greg's Whiskey again saying, lucky you, Aquaviti, for having this bottle. Bimba first release, yeah, second release is good. But for me too, okay and spicy. Maybe the rechar thing. Um, too much hiding the distillery character, in my humble opinion. Interesting, very interesting. I find it do I do find it spicy and bold. I find it interesting and enjoyable. It wasn't too expensive. Um but yeah, I do have it. I was um was fortunate to be able to buy it direct from the distillery. I I thought I'd missed out on the opportunity. Um but they let me buy a bottle direct from them. Stu Baby's saying when is out of season for Isla? Honestly, what I'm basically talking about is weeks that aren't a jazz festival and certainly for Shiel. So if there's festivals on, that's kind of tricky. It's just tricky. I mean, you need somebody to be driving. Excellent. Okay, let's get on with the quiz, don't you think? Have we talked about everything? Have we indulged? I know I wanted to kind of... Uh, Get your feedback about the VPUB and things, but I think I've kind of flogged that horse a bit, haven't I? I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it. I'm very, very grateful. I hope that you are too. I think it's a privilege to be here. I want to continue doing it. And from here on in, I will still... Uh, I've proved tonight my, in my little experiment that I'm able to talk without... I'm able to fill the air with your help uh, without having a theme. But I think it's nice to have a theme to touch upon and engage people with. Okay, uh, let's see if I can find our quiz. Neil Cochran saying, how about a barfly meetup on Isla? I, I'm going to be on Isla during the Fischiel. Um, So I guess the best place to kind of talk about that kind of stuff would be that if, if you're on Facebook, um, the Aquavite Barflies Facebook group. If not, talk about it in here. I'm going to be there, it looks like, um, I'm going to be there potentially the whole week, and I've never been to Fischiel for the whole week. How am I getting away with that? Well, there's a special birthday happening in May this year, and I'm getting, and my wife asked me what I would like for my birthday, and I told her a week on Isla, and she said, well, how much is that going to cost? And I said, no, I don't want you to pay for anything. I just want you to allow me to, <laughs> to have a week. So I put her in a very difficult position. Um, but the ferry's booked. We arrive on the Saturday. I think it's a Saturday to the Saturday 23rd through 30th. I'm going with Doc and I believe Sevi, the alchemist. Uh, whoever's going to be able to join us there is going to be directly related to accommodation, if they can get accommodation. If you can't get accommodation, bring a tent. I know some places to camp on Isla um, where you're able to use the facilities. Um, you still get a breakfast, you still get uh, showers and things. Um, even if the campsites are full, which they very, very often are during the festival. Malcolm Douglas is saying, uh, waiting for some bottles, Roy. I'll get some English sent up. Interesting stuff that I'm warming to. I don't like the first dram, but it's becoming a nice dram. Ah, you're talking about the lakes. Interesting. Uh, Menno's multi-mission is saying, I'm going to catch up on the quiz on replay. Night, night, you all lovely people. Menno, thank you so much for the comments that I read out and shared tonight. Thank you for staying so late. And uh, I'm glad that you'll pick up the quiz on the replay. I'm going to give away a couple of samples of Elmer T. Lee. And all I want you to do um, is to tell me on the... Oh, dear. That's a bit self-indulgent. Let's go for a general whiskey knowledge question. I'll give three samples of this out to anybody who can tell me in the chat the city in Kentucky 
that this distillery is located in, and it says it on the back. Buffalo Trace Distillery in Kentucky, but what's the town it's located in? And the first three, I'll try to have my screen grab at the ready so I can get it. So I've got Whiskey Jason, Doc McAllen Fine and Rare, and Pete Head all coming through with the exact right spelling. Trevor Wilson just missed out, um, but it's Frankfurt. So you guys, you three guys, I've taken a screen grab of that. So I've got Doc, Whiskey Jason, and Pete Head. Fantastic. Wow, more, more samples to be sending out. I spend a fortune on postage, do you know that? But it's a pleasure because I know that you guys enjoy it. So Frankfurt was the answer. Um, Whiskey Jason come in first, McAllen Fine and Rare, and then Pete Head. Well done, guys. I'll send you a wee sample of this Elmer T. Lee. Let's get the quiz on the go. And uh, thank you so much for... We've got... If I can keep this under two hours tonight, I'll be doing well. So we've got half an hour to do this quiz, and I know I can do it in that time. Let's pull it up. Whiskey Jason's in tonight, so maybe he's been staying up uh, late enough to be able to help me out a wee bit. He's super at that, just to help divide the questions and keep my eye straight in the chat. For anybody that hasn't waited for a quiz at the end before, it's always multiple choice. It's always a 33% chance of you getting it right, even if you don't know it. You're only playing against yourself. There's no prizes or anything. You're keeping your own score at the halfway point. Menno, if you're still here, I forgot to mention, Menno, if you're still here, some of the quiz questions are your questions tonight. Menno, <laughs> at the halfway point, uh, after the picture image, I'll get your score, and then we'll go into the second half of the quiz. Before the end, I'll get your score and see who's scoring the best. You're only playing against yourself, as I say. The second half of the quiz tonight are questions donated by Menno from Belgium. Uh, and I'm uh, kind of excited to share that with you. And if he slipped away... That's okay, because he's going to come back and do the quiz on the replay, and then he's going to realise that it's his own questions anyway. Best of luck, everybody. It's always multiple choice. Let's see how we get on here. 30th of January. Wow, first month of 2020 already gone. Question one. Good luck, everyone. Which Diageo Highland Distillery swapped out its copper, I've put an apostrophe on there, put out its copper worm tubs in 1986, only to switch back in 1995. So we're looking for a Diageo Highland Distillery here, but one that ditched worm tubs in 86, only to realise that they'd made a mistake and promptly put them back in in 1995. Was it A, Klein Leash? Was it B, Dalwini? Or was it C, Taninic? Which... The Agio Highland Distillery swapped out the worm tubs. I'm always impressed. <laughs> I've had to say, wait for the alternatives. <laughs> I'm always impressed by how knowledgeable you guys actually are. And uh, I can see that everybody seems to believe that it's B for Dolwini. And of course, you're absolutely right. If you've said B, which most of you did, you're off and running. Uh, let's look at question two. Well done, guys. It was Dolwini that quickly changed their mind. Question two, which brand released in 1984 is said to be the first single barrel, barrel bourbon to be released and marketed as such? I find this very, very striking. So released in 1984, this is said to be the first single barrel bourbon. Was it A, Four Roses, B, Evan Williams, or C, Blanton's? 1984. Now, it kind of makes sense as you think about it that that's quite a recent innovation. I honestly cannot see. I'm a newbie to bourbon, honestly, still. I cannot see how this is boring. I can see how it's quiet. Not boring. Jason Coates is in, just made it, and see. Good to have you in, Jason. Good to have you joining us. Um, so I can tell you that if you answered C for Blanton's, you're absolutely correct. 1984, 
Blanton's was the first single barrel bourbon to be uh, released and marketed as such. The original, the Blanton's. Question three. Which 2013 Scotch relaunch was quickly reversed and later re-relaunched after consumer protest ensured its demise? I'm kind of proud of the whiskey community for this because this relaunch happened. They presented the product. Um, it was beautifully packaged at beautiful prices to go along with it. And the consumer quickly said, no. And it died. Was it A, Fetter Cairn? Was it B, Longmorn? Or was it C, Mortlach? 2013 relaunch was a disaster. I don't think it was a complete disaster, but it was hardly a success. And they pulled it and they revised everything. And then they brought back a 2000 and, uh, 2017, I think. They launched it again, uh, and it was a much more acceptable presentation. It's gone down a lot better. Spirit Works, Thomas, and evening all, I was busy dramming with Ard Baggy. Hope you've all had fun. Tom, I opened up tonight with your Dal Ewan, 15-year-old, 47.5% from that boutique whiskey company. And as I was sipping it before I went live, I promptly went on and bought a bottle of it, Tom. Tried it a couple of times last year, as I admitted earlier, but trying it tonight, that creamy weight, the heft of it, thought it was wonderful. Picked up a bottle for myself. Thank you, Tom, for sharing with me and uh, unfortunately getting me to spend money in January when I said I wouldn't. And of course, the answer here, that the re-relaunch was, of course, Mortlack. They brought it out in 50 CL bottles, beautiful bottles, uh, but it was all this kind of packaging, more than the, the bizarre ABVs, bizarre names, non age statement, 50 CL, very expensive. The 18-year-old came out at £175 or something ridiculous at launch. Um, just crazy. I mean, it, 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 Mortlack was an enthusiast's brand up until that point. Prized by blenders. It was a good, good malt. People knew it was a good malt, but launching is a luxury brand without earning its stripes. Come on, how naive can you be? Uh, fortunately, not many people bought it. Um, you can still find dusties of these bottles on the shelf now it was a it was a disaster and i'm glad that the consumer has the ability to make these rational decisions from time and let producers know when they've got it completely wrong the answer was c for mortlack move on to question four and ask the dew the due and Tullamore due is an acronym it's not actually an acronym it's initials for which stands for what a daniel edmund williams b dermot edward watkins or C, David Ewan Watson. I'm afraid this is a wee bit of, as Jimmy Legg would say, it's a wee bit of an ASAC question. If you know this, you know it. And if you don't, you're guessing, I'm afraid. Is it Daniel Edmund Williams, Dermot Edward Watkins, or David Ewan Watson? Can a huge mash of English, Welsh, Scots, and Irish names there? I'm just having a bit of fun with it. Let's drink whiskey saying, in my defense, Elmer is a single barrel and I've only opened one. It's possible the bottle I got is a dud, but my friends have all tried mine and agreed. It could be that I'm just simply not experienced. Uh, honestly, let's drink whiskey. Um, but this to me is, is very, very Moorish, honestly. Really enjoying this tonight. I'm going to pour... I'll pour it. I don't have another clean glass. I do have over there, but I'm not going to dirt another glass because I've got some water here that I can rinse out this Del Ewan. It was nice and light and creamy. I'm going to pour some of Malcolm Douglas's Ardbeg Supernova. See what that does to the Elmer T. Lee and the Kilkerran. Now, the Supernova is super expensive. <laughs> The pricey, pricey dram, 53.8%. The supernova that was never going to get made again, but then it made it, they made it again. Oh, wow, this, smell it straight away. Wow. The peat's coming out of it, of course, but it's not as powerful as, as I imagined. I was expecting to be a wee bit intimidated by Pete there. 
Okay, let's uh, answer the question and tell you that it was A, put your misery and say it was Daniel Edmund Williams for question four. The due and tell more due is Daniel Edmund Williams. If you knew that, if you said A, give yourself a point. As we move into the picture question, I'm going to ask you, who's this fella? Who are we looking at there with a very, very fine moustache? Desi is on four out of four, as is Bogdan, as is Gix or Skipper. Uh, Dancing my G Glenn is on three, Alistair Gray four. I think the quiz is quite easy tonight. Jules GUK, Thomas Elmer, Alistair Gray, Neil Cochran, all on four out of four. Simon Ray, four out of four. Wow. Okay, I can give you some options as to who this guy is we're looking at here. Are we looking at A, Alfred Barnard, B, Aeneas Coffey, or C, William S. Grant? Is it Alfie Bernard, Aeneas Coffey, or William Grant? Who are we looking at? I can't really give you a clue. I think if I gave you a clue, I'd be helping to give it away a wee bit. Question five is always a picture question. It's just a bit of fun there. It's usually a distillery. I thought it'd be nice to put in um, person for a change, somebody from the history, history books. <laughs> Stu Baby's saying, I thought it was the whiskey novice, lol. That's too funny. Let's see how the subs are going for, for Jim over at Whiskey Novice. Superb. You guys are awesome. It's a wonderful, generous community. I know a sub doesn't cost you anything, but to people out there that are grinding away in front of a camera, it means the world. I can tell you that the guy that we're looking at, as you all are a wee bit all over the place here, I, I am quite uh, surprised by that. Um, I thought that everybody would nail this as the great and very late uh, Alfred Barnard. Um, he wrote The Whiskey Distilleries of the United Kingdom back in the late 19th century. It's widely regarded, even to this day, to be one of the best pieces of whiskey literature ever written. Um, I have read excerpts from it. They, they did a kind of copy version of it. They brought back and have released a couple of times since. The original versions of that book are worth thousands of pounds now. But he is Alfred Bernard Aeneas Coffey, famously refined the invention of the coffee mill, of course, and William S. Grant. Well, we know who he is. Um, because of grants. So there you go. If you answered A, give yourself a point as we move into the second half of the quiz, which this evening the questions are curated by our friend Menno from Menno's, Menno's Multi Mission. Question six. Shiva's brothers started out in which Scottish city? Uh, which Scottish city did Shiva's start out in? Was it A? Perth, was it B, Aberdeen, or was it C, Inverness? Not as quite a huge lag this evening at my side. I hope it's not the same at your side. Hope everything's working okay. Oh, some guesswork going on here as well. Wow, I thought that would be fairly easy. Uh, question. So the Shivas brothers were two young brothers in their early 20s that went off in, in, to follow different careers and through um, a route through grocery ended up in wines and provisions and things like that and eventually spirits and whiskey. But they were formed up in the northeast of Scotland in Aberdeen. Uh, lots of uh, whiskey history has come out of, well, both Inverness, but a lot of whiskey history has certainly come out of Perth. Um, but it's quite surprising how much whiskey history has come out of uh, the northeast and Aberdeen as well. And certainly Shivas brothers can trace the roots back to farmland in Ellen, just outside of Aberdeen. Um, but the business itself was very much born in the city of Aberdeen. Question seven. The water source used by Lefroig is called, I know very few water sources, but I knew this one, uh, but Laphroaig is called what? Is it A, the Kilbride Burn, B, the Kildalton Burn, or C, the Ardenissel Burn? I think I'm producing, uh, sorry, pronouncing Ardenissel correctly. A, Kilbride Burn, B, Kildalton Burn, 
or C. Ardenesle Burn. My delay has corrected itself. I think it was just things at my side. Good stuff. Everybody, with very few exceptions, seems to think that it's A for the Kilbride Burn. Now, they've had disputes over the years at Laphroaig over water source. Um, it's a very precious commodity on Isla. You would think that Isla was, was drenched in water because of its location, but actually it's, it drains very, very well. They suffer droughts regularly if they don't get rainfall. Um, and throughout disputes in the past, they actually dammed this stream, this burn, and they made a reservoir out of it, and that is now called the Kilbride Reservoir. And, of course, I'm looking for A, the Kilbride Burn. That is the water source for Laphroaig. If you answered A, give yourself a point. You can do a tour at Laphroaig, actually. It's kind of cool. I've not done it yet, but they give you wellies, and you can actually walk up and see the water source for yourself. Um, and they make a bit of fun out of it. They give you some education and drams and things along the way. I might enjoy doing that one day. I'm not sure I'll be able to do it during the fish eel, but maybe one day. Question eight. Half past 11. Klein Leash has six pot stills, but what is remarkable is it the fact that A, the spirit stills are larger than the wash stills? Now, of course, in Scotch whiskey distilling, the wash still that takes the wash in to produce low wines to, to then go into spirit stills, the spirit stills tend to be smaller. But perhaps at Klein Leash, they're bigger. Uh, the spirit stills are bigger than the wash stills. Or is it that there are four wash stills and only two spirit stills at Klein Leash? Or is it that the wash stills are twice the size of the spirit stills? Something is unusual about Klein Leash. A, the spirit stills are larger than the wash stills. B, the wash stills, there are four and only two spirit stills. Or is it, so it's an imbalanced distillation. We're saying if it's B, C, the wash stills are twice the size of the spirit stills. Let me know what you think. Typically dry for our bag. There's lots, much more, much more peat on the palate. Very dry. Staying quite dry, especially after the drums that I've had tonight. Briny, very briny. Not as medicinal as you might imagine. Our big tends to be more kind of floral, um, more kind of fresh, more kind of ashen to me. Quite powerful, but dry. Thank you, Malcolm. Very interesting. Very interesting. Our big su supernova, the, the most recent supernova. So let's see what you're saying. Royal 431 is saying B, got to be right sooner or later. <laughs> Are you struggling tonight, my friend? One glass man is saying A, guess. I can tell you, Warner, um, that you are absolutely correct. Um, the spirit stills are actually bizarrely larger than the wash stills at Klein Leash. So if you answered A, give yourself a point. Um, I did not know that, so I'm grateful to Menno for pointing that out to me because it's very curious. It's something, especially considering how much of a fan I am of Klein Leash, that I would know that, but I didn't know that. So apparently, the spirit stills at Klein Leash are larger than the wash stills. Question nine, second last question. Before Brook Laddie was revived in 2001, it had been closed since when? We talked about this very recently on a VPUB, um, but it depends on how good your memory is. But most folk, I think, would perhaps know this. When did Brook Laddie close before it was revived in 2001? Was it A, 1988, B, 1991, or C, 1995? A, 98, B, 91, or C, 95? I remember seeing a lot of videos at the time, or not at the time, but since then, and it's kind of Jim McEwen and the people involved at Brugladi, uh, Mark Rainier and the team, uh, been nervous about what they'd uncovered and just how bad a state it was in. Uh, 
I think this is a very good up bag. Sip by sip. Wow. Yes, nice one, Malcolm. I'm going to put a wee coin on it. <laughs> and I'm going to just leave that sitting on the side. And as I do my wee kind of housekeeping after the stream, I'm going to sit and enjoy that. Thank you for sharing it with me. I'm very, very pleased for the majority of the drums that I've had tonight to be things that you guys have shared with me. It's very cool. Thomas Elmer is saying, how does it compare to Dark Cove? Not at all. Uh, Dark Cove is rich, um, much more fruit, much more dried fruit, much more um, atypical Ardbeg flavours, I would say. Whereas this is much more in line with kind of typical Ardbeg. But but there's a kind of, it's quite powerful, but there's a there's a kind of softness to it. I'm generalising. Um, the ashen thing is toned back a wee bit. It's very briny. I'm finding it tonight quite dry, but I want to go back. I want to spend a bit more time with it. I want to sit with it. It is good. Um, obviously, I'm not very sure about aging things with Supernova. I know it's heavily, heavily peated. But the peat is not off-putting. It's very much part of the dram. I'll go back and play with it a wee bit later. Um, Malcolm Douglas is saying enjoy. Thank you very much, Malcolm. Okay, let's see how we're getting on. If I tell you the answer to question nine, most of you knew it was 1995, of course. So before we hit up question 10, last question, let's see who's on, who's scoring well tonight. I think there's going to be lots of nine out of nines tonight. Uh, Whiskey Weekend Drama saying Whiskeypedia is wrong, I think. Whiskeypedia is often wrong, don't you think? I don't tend to get much of my uh, quiz content when I do the quiz questions from Wikipedia. I don't know where Menno got these questions from, I have to be honest with you. Um, perhaps, thinking about it, maybe I should verify them myself. Um, I mean, things like this I don't have to verify, but sometimes you have to. Um, most of my questions come from literature, from books. Oh, Scotty, Kelton Moose is having an absolute stinker. That's very atypical for, for Scott. Um, on five out of nine. Oh, wow, I thought there'd be higher scores than this. Sid Martin on nine out of nine. Jens Roger Christoffers on nine out of nine. Wow, you guys are doing tremendously well. Fat Trumpet on eight out of nine. Donald Rance, nine out of nine. Fantastic. Alistair Gray, eight out of nine. Wes, Greg's Wissing, you had Desi, Neil, Bogdan, Mose, Richard Hall, Daniel Vermas, Whiskey Jason, Gixer Skipper, Hoyt Hemphill, Whiskey Frontier, Thomas Elmer, Simon Ray, Paul Gibbs, all on seven out of nine, as, as well as Whiskey Novice. Jason Coates on eight out of eight. I guess you missed the first one, Jason. Okay, let's go to the last question. There are a couple of you on nine out of nine. Let's see how you get on with the last one. I did switch this out. It was, as Jimmy Legg would say, the, the tenth question was a complete ass hat question, but I couldn't, my bottle crashed at the end. I couldn't keep it in and I swapped it out. Good luck for question 10 for those of you on 9 out of 9. Amrut comes from a Sanskrit word, Amrita, which translate as what? A, water of life. B, nectar of the gods. Or C, fire water. A, water of life. B, nectar of the gods. C, fire water. What does Amrut mean? The Indian whiskey, the Indian single malt. Blanton's. Oh, Cokeran. Fantastically different drums tonight. Really all over the place. Lots of people guessing A for water or life. Some people saying B, nectar of the gods. Hey, nobody thinking it's fire water. <laughs> Kilted Moose saying got to be A. Donald Rance saying, oh, bugger, A. Eh? Wow, maybe it is a bit of an ass, that one. What's really interesting about this is that this was a, a topic that tripped up the Scotch Test Dummies a couple of years back, maybe three years ago. I'm not very really sure, but they talked about the meaning of Amrut and they got a, a storm of abuse in the comments because they kind of got it wrong, I think. Um, but I can tell you, put you out of your misery, um, that Amrut 
Amrita means be nectar of the gods. If you've answered nectar of the gods, give yourself a point. I'm looking in the chat to see if anybody's managed to get it over the line for a 10 out of 10 tonight. Let's see anybody manage it. Steve is saying he's okay. Good to have you in, Steve, saying he's okay with seven out of nine. Seven out of ten for Tabitha. Bogdan, eight. Lots of eights. Gex or Skipper on eight. Simon Ray, seven. Welcome to with seven fat Trump and bollocks. Neil Cochran, uh, he's, not, he's not admitting it. Oh, wow. Tricky one. Nine out of ten for Donald. Oh, wow. Slipped up at the end. Did somebody get a ten out of ten then? I'm looking. Alistair Gray got a nine out of ten. Jens Roger Christofferson is celebrating. He's saying, yes, 10 out of 10. Jason Coates, 9 out of 9, 10 out of 10 last week. What is happening? Hey, you're a scholar, Jason, or you're just a barfly, perhaps. Perhaps it's just that you're a regular barfly. Sid Martin, changed my mind at the very last minute for a 10 out of 10. Sid, you're only playing against yourself, and you've thoroughly thrashed yourself. Be raucous. And victory. Well done. Another 10 out of 10 tonight. So let's see Greg's whiskey. Yeah, well done for those on 10 out of 10 and 9 out of 10. Yes. I actually thought the way the quiz had started tonight eh, that it was going to be um, quite easy. But it looks like only a couple of you managed to push it over uh, over the end. Scogsmart is saying bump tonight. A donut. 0 out of 10. Scogsmart. Sometimes it's just the way it plays. It's just the way it plays. I dread the day that if I start inviting people on to set questions for me, I dread the day that I end up looking at a messy, messy score. Jason Coates is saying, Agro Vidi, I'm just lucky to know the questions being asked at this time. You had me at six out of ten a few weeks ago with your easy quiz. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's funny to judge. Great quiz. And Menno's multi-mission. Thank you. Good night from me. Thank you, Alistair. And good night to you as well. Um, I'll, I want to thank everybody for making these last three years seem like three months, and I mean that sincerely. Sometimes I wish I could carve out more time. It's going to be my thing for 2020, to carve out more time to do more edited content, because I know the amount of feedback that I get, that that's dearly what you're all after. But this VPUB has become a lifeblood of this channel. You guys, this community, this culture, this fun this engagement, this sharing, everything that's built up around it is just fantastic. And I will stay committed to these live streams for as long as you continue to enjoy them. Thomas Emerson, looks like you got Whiskey Novice to 125 tonight. Uh, glad you liked the drama at Slanchet. Thank you, Thomas. I very much did. And you may find that I pour another wee half dram just before I go up the stairs tonight. Thank you so much, my friend. Wonderful to have you literally place this in my hand in Texas last year. An absolute pleasure to have met you. Whiskey and Six is in. Um, fantastic. Uh, Whiskey and Six is a green with Whiskey Novice on something. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but it's great to have you in, Rob. Um, I have had a very self-indulgent live stream tonight, um, and I make uh, no more apologies for it. No excuses. It's been wonderful the last three years on this channel. It's been better, better, better than I could have expected at every stage of the way. And uh, I will always uh, feel pr privileged and never cease to be amazed at the support. I'm going to raise this. Uh, Elmer T. Lee from Thomas Elmer. Um, raise a glass to you all. Say thank you to all my wonderful barflies. Thank you to all my wonderful community, my fantastic and dearly, dearly valued patrons, my peer creators that so many of you hang out in this chat with me, like Rob, uh, Jim, and all the other guys that are here tonight. I'll raise this glass. And I'll say thank you for the last three years. And I very much look forward to the next three. Slanchava.